Museum of Modern Art looking at Barnett Newman's Ver Heroicus Sublimus from uh, 1950-51. It's a huge canvas. It's 18, it's almost 18 feet long. That's enormous. It's absurdly large. And I think it's meant to be something that sort of envelops you visually. Is that something about the title? What does the title have to do with it? It seems like the title and the size are related. Well, it's, it's usually translated towards a heroic sublime, and it's a, it's a pretty ostentatious title. Um, and I think the size is pretty ostentatious as well. You know, Newman is really looking for a kind of grand statement. What I love is that MoMA usually has this hanging opposite uh, a very small, uh, much more humble little painting that he did a f just a couple of years earlier called One Mint One, which in some ways is, I think, even right. a more powerful and interesting painting. So if we take Newman and at, at his title and walk towards the work, I guess the first thing that we realize is that we don't have any subject matter per se to fall back upon, at least not any traditionally recognizable subject matter to identify, yet we are confronted with a vast expanse of color. Yeah, and art historians have worked really hard to try to insert subject matter in here, or at least a kind of l language of ideas. What and kind of subject matter? Because for me this is, I mean, and perhaps this is one of the hardest things about it, is that I, I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what I'm looking at. I see a lot of red, um, <laughs> yeah. and I like red. It's a large-scale red painting with yep. some lines on it, but I don't really feel, I think, the thing that maybe I'm supposed to feel in terms of what Newman wants me to feel. And so I've always kind of been confused about that and had a difficult time with the painting. Yeah, you know, um, I think when we look at abstract expressionism, and this is always categorized with Pollock and with de Kooning and with Rothko, mm -hmm. and uh, paintings with which a, a sort of a, an intense emotional reaction is, is, is almost expected, right? right? Uh, a kind of physicality, a kind of emotionalism, a kind of directness, you know, the, the notion of action painting in general, and all of those sort of romantic ideas. Uh, and I'm not sure that Newman is really, is, is really looking for that kind of emotional punch. I think that there is, I, I think that there is a kind of emotionality here, but I'm, I'm not sure that it's really divorced from a set of ideas. I, I think, I, let me step back. I think ideas are perhaps more central to what Newman is so after what here. Project yeah, is. I think it is perhaps a more intellectualized project. So, you know, well, I, can I ask a question yeah. maybe about what those lines are? Now, I remember they're called zips. Yeah. Newman had this whole thing about zips. He did. And... I, you know, can you help me understand what the zips were? Well, literally, the zips are are the sort of the negative spaces left by by masking tape that he placed down on the canvas before before that layer of paint went on. Okay, so there's um, a real yeah, formal kind of yeah. painterly aspect. To Absolutely, it. he would put down masking tape, he'd paint around and paint over it, and mm -hmm. remove um, the, the paint. And I always imagined that the sound that the tape made when oh. he ripped it off was a kind of zipping sound. Well, no, that doesn't make um, actually. That's yeah. what, actually, you know what? That's more interesting to but, me. But 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 it's been read a whole bunch of different ways, and Newman was often paired with Giacometti, and these were seen as, as figural forms. And, and, in you know, what way? I'm not following In terms of the, forms. well, let's go back to, let's go back to uh, One Mint One for just a minute. That was the painting where, it wasn't the first painting that he used to z z zip with, but it was the first painting where he said, at least, that the zip functioned as a kind of expression of um, spontaneity. And it had to do with, actually, in that case, not removing the masking tape, um, which had to, which was something that was not expected for him. He had planned to remove it in the last moment. He decided to paint over it instead. Here, though, the zips function obviously in a very formal way, um, and and some some art historians and critics have really talked about how the zips, because they move from the complete top of the canvas to the bottom of the canvas and occupy space sort of completely create a very very sort of complex formal statement about this notion of an expression of the canvas itself as an expression of painting that is that there is a kind that the line but by moving vertically from top to bottom becomes a sort of full expression of the of the height of the canvas of its length of its sort of formal existence but i'm not convinced by that you mentioned one mint, and when we go back to one mint, it calls up this idea that the zip is also associative in some way. It it, it can be a formal statement, but it also, it, it, particularly in one mint, and, and here I guess when one moves across this surface of this work as a viewer, there looks, for example, as if there's a little sliver of 
light or some way in which the field is beginning to uh, come apart in some sense as if something is, is going to happen or, or there's some kind of beginning going on. Kind of anticipation? Uh, yeah, anticipation. And I think to, to think about the, the context in which Newman is making these works, just World War II has just ended, um, the United States has just been heavily involved in this war, there's been a lot of loss of life, uh, and Newman is creating something which is in, in some sense very basic, very fresh, uh, uh, sort of in, in his mind, I think that he thinks it's very mythical in some sense, that this is a kind of mythical beginning and if, if one wants to think about subject matter in relation to the work outside of form. See, but I, I, I get worried when people, when, when critics start to, to, to read it that, that literally. Because, and there are, and there are there's absolutely a body of literature that speaks of this actually having almost a kind of biblical reference as being a sort of an initial division, an initial parting, having this kind of um, almost Genesis-like quality to it. But I was I wanted to go back for just a second to something you said. If you look for instance at the white zip that's a, that's on the left side mm -hmm. of, of the canvas, that does seem as if there's kind of light coming through in one way, but can it simultaneously also function as a positive against a field? That is, can it also be in a sense a figure against a ground? So, just as easily? Back to your question is why would these mean a human presence? Just quite simply by their very basic abstracted verticality that there would be some kind of human presence. Again, uh, in an associative way, it, it implies it very, very, very vaguely connotes and, that idea. And that's, in fact, the, sort of the interpretation that makes the most sense to me. Because if you think about, Newman was, was incredibly involved emotionally in the horrors of the war, uh, even from the, from the uh, safe distance of the United States. You know, he was, he was a Jew, and it was a, the revelations of the Holocaust were incredibly powerful for him. And there has been some discussion about what it meant to reclaim the notion of the individual in space um, after the concentration camps. Um, and the Zips have been, in that interpretation, seen then as an expression of the lone individual occupying space again in some very determined and very sort of essential way, as, as, you, had, as you had mentioned. But here's the interesting thing. This is not just one Zip in space. Right, two, or actually, f or more, four, more than that. The, there are fainter ones, or five, ones. or six. And there's there's something really interesting going on, which is that you have sort of different densities of, of zips, and almost creating a kind of community of isolation. Or is it just a play of space and and color? To me, it seems like a lot of paint. I mean, if I can, it, to me, looking at this, the way that I engage it, because I don't really see. And it's just this, it, this is just my interpretation. I relate to it best if I consider how much paint that Newman has worked with here. That I think about the size, the enormity of the canvas, that it's divided into these sections, but there's so much paint. And to me, that's where the human presence is, that someone has actually painted all in this. In the act of painting. In the act of this, painting. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to talk about action painting and sort of that phys physicality of it, then it's Newman putting all this paint on canvas. And that's to me, like, that's the only place that I see it. And that, to me, is, is actually more powerful than any of the other ideas that anybody come up, comes up with about it, because if you're just looking at it and encountering it, it's, to me, about those those very basic things. I think, you know, there is, I think that's right. There is this this is a made object, and the surface is not so perfect that we don't see uh, his brushwork mm -hmm. in it. Um, and I think that, that that's right. This is, this is something that's made. It's meant to be um, intensely human, mm -hmm. I think. And it is, I think, very much intended to be very, uh, very much an expression of human existence and, and, um, and human presence. And, and I think that that act of making is absolutely essential. But that has to do again with a kind of finding and a kind of spontaneity, and um, and th and it's something that that I don't think is immediately apparent here. But I think Newman was looking for um, a kind of sort of set of processes and a kind of decision making, mm -hmm. even as he was constructing these very geometric and seemingly very rigorous mm -hmm. um, kinds of paintings. Have you talked about the red? It is red. It's really yeah. red. It's really red. Well, that's yeah. what I. Th I mean, the redness and the paint is sort of the things that that overpower me. It's not blue. So red in terms of green. violence, in terms of blood, in terms of passion, in terms of those I don't know. color I just, theory, in I terms just, of... I just think it's red. No, it I'm, I'm not sure that it's those things. I'm, don't maybe, have red house. maybe. Maybe. If, for me, it's a space that can be occupied. You know, there's, there's a very, the red creates a very ambiguous kind of space. And maybe it's because I look back to, say, Matisse's Red Studio. But I'm not so sure that Newman isn't also. Well, I think blue might suggest sky, so you might stay away from that. 
right? Or this green right. might suggest... No, no, well, he, your, he painted this, large blue paintings did. also. Yeah, he did. he did. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's... I, I'm not so sure that, that color has those kinds of traditional associations here. I'm not saying um, it has a traditional association. I'm just... Yeah. Saying it is a, it's a choice that was made here. It's a very particular choice and he's creating a kind of a kind of arena or a kind of space um, that those zips can then occupy. And I think that that the red becomes this very rich and very intense and very dramatic mm -hmm. field in which those those forms um, can then in a sense structure space in themselves. But it seems like any color at this scale would create that same kind of arena. Yeah. Although curiously, and this is just my opinion, the blues fail to some extent. And the, the red has a kind of ability to function almost atmospherically in a curious way that allows for... I mean, I don't know what, about you, but when I look at this painting, I actually see, I see both intense surface, but also real depth here. And, um, and when you look at some of the, the, the less defined zips, the ones that are... Mm -hmm. um, I like those actually more. Yeah, they, they can actually recede in space in some ways, um, mm -hmm. but they can also be very much on surface. And, um, and there's a, a really interesting kind of play that's almost Mondrian-like, actually, in a, certain, mm -hmm. in a certain curious way, in terms of balance that has to do with verticality or horizontality, but also has to do with near and far. And, and a kind of play of form within, within this arena. I guess what, what, what comes across ultimately to me when I look at Newman is that he is, in a sense, absolutely um, in control of the space that he's constructing. Mm -hmm. um, and it, there is a kind of deliberateness um, and a kind of artificial construction of a space that really speaks of his choices and decisions. Um, and in a sense, this very deliberate notion that we can make and we can occupy space. And I think, as th to the points that you were making before, this is all grounded in this historical moment um, when that notion of the individual acting into space is incredibly potent. And I've, I've never really been able to think of this outside of its physical presence in the room in the MoMA. I just wanted to say it's strange for me to talk about it as this mm -hmm. uh, image without its context because of its scale, which I'm certain is, is it was a part of, of its process of making this work. But the way that it occupies space in terms of the physical space in the room around it is as, as important as the space in, in terms of how we've been talking about it here in, in the image and on the image as well. You know, it's really interesting that you say that because when you watch people looking at this painting, they react to it v very bodily, very physically. Mm -hmm. You know, people will walk past it and see the rhythm of those zips as they walk past it, which is almost musical. Or they'll sometimes stand directly in front of one of the zips and align their own bodies with that vertical form, um, creating a kind of almost sort of bilateral symmetry um, as their body becomes divided by it. And there's a really interesting kind of physical orientation that takes place if you watch people look at this in a kind of physical engagement with, this, with the space and the forms that this painting constructs. Mm -hmm.